Welcome to your weekly program, Bilahdan, the show that brings you African films to your living room. We're all excited about Image of Africa. There's a film festival of African movies about made by African directors and about Africans and about change. This is Africa, not African-American. And we have here a very special guest that has a film feature in the film festival in the Santa Anthony uh, Theater. We have Professor Sharif Keita. He is a, a director of uh, the film that Remember, uh, remember No Cortella. I know he's- uh, Remembering I, No Cortella. <laughs> uh, remembering No Cortella. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, here is a, I think I'm gonna just put this down. Yeah. Uh, this is film about, it's a documentary about four years of hard work to find out uh, a, a woman that really has a lot to do with uh, the history of South Africa and also the history of resistance. And uh, welcome to Bilahdan, uh, so, Dr. Thank Keita. You. And thank I, you very so nice much. of you driving all the way from Carleton. It was a very nice drive. <laughs> I discovered <laughs> nice some new territories in Minnesota. So how is Carleton? You teach what? There? I teach French and uh, African and Caribbean literature in French. Wonderful. So. Uh, and the connection between Caribbean and Africa is Well, is again, slavery, slavery, you know, yeah, taking huge. Africans to the Caribbean and who at some point discovering they have this identity together and started writing. Wonderful. Yeah, so that's the literature I And, and a writing usually reflects a shared experience that's of right, someone. That's right. That's T right. Tell me, it took, it took you uh, about four years to, to, do the, to make this film and yes. find out about this uh, yes. uh, woman. Uh, yes. what, what was so special about her that really triggered your curiosity? Here? Well, I mean, the, it's the constellation of people who have really played a big role in the liberation of uh, South Africa and that had really gone unrecognized. Uh, it started really with the story of uh, John Dube, who was the husband of Nokutela Dube. John Dube, uh, he was born in 1871 and died in 1946. Studied in this country at the end of the 19th century. Between 1887 and 1892, and then 1896 and 1899. So he studied in this country. And he's the one who went back and founded the African National Congress, the party that everybody associates Mandela. Nelson Mandela with. Yeah. And he created it, he co-created it before Mandela was born in That's 1912. True. That's true. Exactly. So, I mean, discovering about this man that I did not know anything about just blew my mind. I said, wow. I mean, I know about Nelson Mandela. We all heard about mm -hmm. him. We've uh, all heard of campaign to free him. Uh, he's, he's been the face of the ANC, mm -hmm. but to, to discover that uh, somebody founded this whole movement before Mandela was born just blew my mind. And that was uh, in 1999 I made this discovery during the trip to South Africa. And then coming back with the resolution that I'm going to really f educate myself about this man and his connection to the U.S., to discovering that this John Dubé's connection to America comes through Northfield, Minnesota. That's right. Oh, it blew my yeah. mind. Through missionaries. Oh, we're gonna close this down here. Yeah. You see, <laughs> through missionaries who had gone to South Africa in 1881 from Northfield, okay? Imagine. What was going on in Northfield at that, the time? That's right, it was just a, a small town. It's still a small town. It's still a small town, that's right, you see. But again, you know, this young couple who had gone to school in Ohio, Oberlin, but she was from Northfield. They get married in August 1881 and set out to go to South Africa as missionaries to the other end of the world. Can you imagine that? Who's white? Uh... That's right, white missionaries. Exactly. White missionaries of the Congregational Church uh, belonging to a mission, mission called the American Board, mm. which was a multi-denominational, very active uh, Christian missionary movement. They decided that Africa is where they're going to go, mm. to South Africa. So six years later, is this young couple that brings with them a young Zulu boy by the name of John Dobe to open the doors of American educations to him. And they take him to Ohio, to Oberlin College. And they also really put a lot of ideas into his head, connect him to the reality of the African Americans who had come out of slavery, also were trying to really uh, find their footing in American society, using education, but particularly industrial education. Booker T. Washington, this very famous black American leader, was the main proponent of that idea that 
you teach people the vocational trade, mm -hmm. then they'll be able to open small businesses for themselves. Depend independent. Th that's right. That's right. Independence. I, exactly. Is it this one? Yes. Of we usually, you know, I came from Asia, Africa. Yes. Yes. Uh, that we we have like uh, our heroes. We that's try right. to find out a Western connection to them because we get this feeling that yes, yes. Our, on our own we cannot do it. There must be an our connection for a white or the West. Well, or, not necessarily. Uh -huh. It just happened like, like that. I mean, okay. you know, the, the context in South Africa at that time was that a black person could not get education beyond seventh grade. Uh -huh. So, and John Dube's family wanted him to get more education and in fact, wanted him to get the education that only white people get in South Africa. So where could he get it? <laughs> in America. And where, uh, how could he get it? Some good and a people. And different education some too. Good than people, some uh -huh. good people went against, in fact, the segregation mm -hmm. that existed yeah. and the, the unspoken rules of the mission and took this young man I, and I know where, him to uh, America. So, so it's not a matter of finding, yeah, you know, I know. Western... I, I was you know, just making a comment, but let, yes. let's go back to, okay, okay. Uh, to, to the film. Anyway, right? so, I know, because so, we have a few minutes left that's here. Right. So this story then starts with John Dube. Mm -hmm. I made the first film about him, which uh, I finished in 2005. It's called Obelin Inanda, The Life and Times of John L. Dube. But then when I finished that in 2005, I say, well, the story cannot stop there. Because see, yeah. this story has also become a personal story because I live in Northfield. So these white missionaries who have done uh, such an, 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 an you know, believable act of generosity also need to be recognized. And they were not recognized by anyone. Mm -hmm. So I also traced the, them all the way to their grave in California. That's why the title of the second film is Cemetery Stories. Yeah. Because yeah. I left one cemetery behind my house in Northfield to go to California to another cemetery where these people were buried. So it was an occasion for me to pay tribute to these people, to their contribution to African liberation. Because without their good act, John Dube would not have had this ov overture. To, you know. Mm -hmm. okay. And also, John Dube and his wife, and his first wife, Nokutela, who was the student of Mrs. Nokutela, uh, Nokutela was his wife? Nokutela was John Dube's wife. That's right. Oh. And they were all young people growing up in the mission. And she and never left? Did she leave? She, she, he and, she and her, him came to the oh. U.S. Oh, I see. In 1896. Can oh. you imagine? Oh. For an African woman, yes. black African woman, to get a chance to come to America in 1896, to Brooklyn, New York, to also get some education, was unique. So, and this was a power couple. They were talented. They were driven, they had a motivation to educate the people, to bring light to their own people, and they also were, had their eyes set on independence. We want our people to be independent. And she, on top of all that, had a special talent of music. She was a great singer. She was the first Zulu African woman to tour the United States singing click songs. You know, in Zulu language, mm -hmm. they have clicks. Yes, yes. So she mesmerized audiences. Turn it to music instead That's, of annoying well, to a lot well, of words. Well, it was I mean, part of the, the language, the language you see. Yeah. But when you sing it, then it adds to the music. So American audiences were mesmerized, and they were raising funds for their school. Uh -huh. Can you imagine, in 1904, I found traces of this woman in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. She was raising funds in Oshkosh, Wisconsin in 1904, November 1904. My goodness. 109 years ago, okay? To, to go and help the fledgling school, which they started in 1900. And do you know, it's this school is called Otlange, Otlange Institute, they called it. This school was the school where the first African to win the Nobel Prize was trained. Albert Lutuli was the president of the ANC in the 60s, in the early 60s. He won the Nobel Prize, the first African to win it. But he studied at John Dubois. Well, NEC was a progressive, uh, communist, uh, player on the road, but... Not communist. Uh -huh. Not I don't left. Well, the later yeah. ANC was called yeah, communist. Yeah, yeah. The ANC was labeled That's communist. That's how the, the white uh, labeled them. Huh? That's right. Yeah, that's because they, they labeled them communist. Yeah. What blew like my, now, terrorist. Th 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 that's right. See, <laughs> what blew my mind was to know that, well, this so called communist organization yeah. was founded by somebody who studied in, the, in the heart of capitalism in the United States. So, I, again, well, you know. Communism comes from capitalism, too. <laughs> well, that, that is true. That is true. That well, is true. Well, you know, uh, let's yeah. just. Uh, I know
know, yes. I, I'm really yes. not, I, I'm doing uh, injustice here to, uh, to, to end it, but we want to show a few yes. minutes of okay. the, the film, okay. No Cartel. And uh, it, what's the name? The, does it mean anything? But I thought you said Well, no, you mean, you mean no the Cortella. name No Cartel? No Cortel. Well, there, there, there are two uh, yeah, I know. meanings. Uh, uh, she herself says that she was born at a time when uh, people had to pay taxes. So it means the paying of taxes. <laughs> Because the colonialists were or no imposing, pay taxes. were imposing. <laughs> well, in those days, you had no. Ch in fact, there was a war. Like that no the Zulus. Cartel attacks. Well, that's, <laughs> you could interpret I'm that way. I'm making things up. Yes, but but uh, the one of the grand nieces says that in Zulu it can also mean to flower, to 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 grow wow, and flower. What a connotation. That, Maybe we will have that meaning on uh, NRA here, so people that's right. willingly pay tax. Well. We, well, thank you so much. Really, very, very nice of you to thank come you. all the way, thank Dr. Schrecker, uh, director honor. of uh, Remember, Remembering Norcatella. We're going to see a few, uh, a few minutes of the film, and it's right on St. Anthony Mean from uh, Minnesota Film Society, Seven the festival, PM, Image of African, and we'll see you in a few minutes. Salam alaikum, and God bless you all. Pagamagamalusolungakulu, <laughs> Age kunkulunkulonze, osenze la bonke, baba wetu na manda, no mimiagi na hamba, koto wenango sa uskoswa, au ba koswa futa bantu bako, au ikoswa ni msebenzi, au wanga anko sa ingwele, jenga loki fundu msebenzi na gnoktela, inga fundu na sa ingwa timi opila, e kaya surini, kusugu mingi losu simenge inyao, zitingo su pareme, ngosho bulmanga lisayo, sigu nigutu musikela gonke loku, ngoku, Suggesso in Gossi, or a far fuga was Sierra Pilo Munapagate, or in Gossi to Army. intention to bring back this woman, bring back her story. I came with the intention to bring her back, to bring her history back, because the woman has been left in the dark for too long. For too long. Thank you. So I, as I told you, I was going to do it alone because I wasn't sure I was going to find a family. I said, even if there is no family, even